Hello everyone and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons, episode number 7 and I feel like we've had our fun in this pack, no fun allowed here. <laughs> this is where the real grind begins. Oh yeah, I did lock this front door here, we do have to make this place a bit safer. And there's still lots of development to go around this base but I have been doing a little bit between episodes here. I managed to clean up this front area as well as do a bit of a reshuffle on the chests. To craft all these chests, I did end up making a lathe, our next LV machine. And I also added an extra exit onto this room right here, which goes straight into our LV machine room. So previously we invested in two steam grinders, and progressed a little bit through LV to pick up a few more machines. And we visited the Twilight Forest to pick up lead, so that we could invest in potent pipes. Along with the chest reshuffle, I also did go mining in the Twilight Forest, specifically for iron, which we're going to need in large quantities here to fill the blast furnaces. I know I keep talking about these quite a lot, but today is the day we finally add some more of these things. Steel is an important resource for progression here and we're kind of getting a bit low, we're down to our last two stacks. Yeah, just over two stacks. Also, I did see the feedback last episode on the basalt and some of you guys hated the idea of the basalt. A bit like this quest right here. And truthfully, I'm not entirely sold myself after sleeping on the idea. It's also not super easy to get either, I think we've actually ran out. Yeah, this is not the same block right here, it's a different block. Oh, you know what, let's actually start today with a loot bag. No way! <laughs> wow, that is amazing luck. Combustion generator and a steam turbine. Not too bad, not too bad of a start. And some steel fluid pipes, wow. Oh, you know what, there's actually one more for the lathe. A veggie burger. And of course I don't know where anything goes anymore because of the reshuffle. Coins in here? Yes, coins in here. So when you're playing this game, specifically GTNH, I find it's very easy to get lost in exactly where you want to go progression-wise. I think it's a good idea to lay out exactly what we want to achieve. So mission number one this episode is two coke ovens. These ovens give us creos oil and charcoal to run the blast furnaces, which is actually objective number two, plus two blast furnaces. Obviously so that we can produce more steel. And the third objective is plus one electric blast furnace. The electric blast furnace runs on electricity of course and can run some recipes which the bricked blast furnace cannot run. Now I suspect we won't actually be able to power the electric blast furnace but that's not some some... Now I suspect we won't be able to actually power the electric blast furnace but we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's concentrate on objective number one, the coke ovens, and for that we need some sand. Unlike the last time we done this we do actually have the excavator which makes things quite a bit easier here. So the sand collection actually didn't take too long at all. I went back to base to try and get prepared and I realised that we were kinda short a little bit of copper. I was just batching up some materials I thought we would need in the future here. And I was kind of already in resource collection mode so I just grabbed the backpacks, chopped the trees, quickly refilled the blast furnaces and went out in search of some copper. Fortunately, just next to the copper vein, we actually found a cassiterite sand vein for more tin. And that is also something that we need, so we got about half of that. And all of the ores we can process through the new steam grinders here, look at all of this. And this is actually only about half of it. Yeah, with the chest reshuffle, I realised we had quite a bit left in ore form, in fact we still do. But definitely the steam grinders help our situation here. We do need to look into a way of actually smelting resources, which is something I want to get to today. But yeah, the coke ovens, fortunately there's a much better way of making these bricks inside the alloy smelter. We don't have to do this terrible mess anymore. So we were able to make three and a half stacks just over, and we have a few spare coke oven bricks in here. That takes us to 62, and I think there is actually a quest for this, so I want to make sure we get that. Yeah, we need 260 coke oven bricks. The thing preventing us getting any more is actually the clay, we have like 40 stacks of sand here. And sure we do have lots and lots of hardened clay. However, without a mixer we can't convert- oh we're out of circuits. Without a mixer we can't convert it back into clay balls. Okay, how many circuits can we make? Four? Four is not bad, that allows us to get a mixer. We'll make one. And we'll save the other two circuits actually. However, I want to change the way that we're powering all of these LV machines. And to do that we're going to need some 4x tin cable. And using our brand new chemical reactor we can mix the sulfur and raw rubber dust directly into molten rubber. And using circuit 24, we should be able to coat this cable right here. Yeah, that's a much more efficient way of coating wire. I guess I meant to say wire there. Uncovered wire is wire and coated cable is cable. So we're also going to need some more potent. I did make up some more lead, bronze and tin dust. This will help us with two different projects today actually. 
How much of this can we make? Two and a half stacks, and I think we actually had some left over. Oh uh, yeah, see the problem is smelting all of this. We don't really have an efficient way to use these furnaces yet. You know, we should actually have some potent pipe left over. Somewhere. There it is. Okay, so what we are going to do here, instead of having a turbine per machine, which is terribly inefficient at this point in terms of resource cost, we're instead going to centralize the turbines. And power in Gregtech is also a very complex subject. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. It's very logical, but it's quite unforgiven. We're going to have a massive explosion if we're not careful here, because sending too many volts into a machine does cause it to explode and basically all the machines around it, so we could end up with a big crater if we're not careful. So it basically works like this. As you can see on this mixer, it will accept 32 volts, which is LV energy. And that applies because this is an LV mixer. As you can see, there's also other, other tiers of mixers. It goes from MV, HV, EV, IV, and so on. There's a lot of them. This basically corresponds to the, all the different tiers inside the quest book. As you can see here, LV, MV, HV, EV, IV, etc. And every new tier is 4x the voltage of the previous. And the same applies if you have transformers and you're transforming voltage, it's always 4 to 1. On top of the voltage here, 32, there is also amperage. And amperage mainly applies when you're talking about cables. So because we have 4x tin cable, it can handle 4 amps. And because it's made out of tin, it can handle 32 volts, or LV energy. As you can see here, the 1x version can handle still 32 volts, but only 1 amp. So that's definitely something important that we have to take care of. All of these steam turbines also output one amp. They generate one amp each. Also in the cable here is loss per meter. You can see here this loses one EU volt, which pretty much means that every length of cable loses one volt every block. So if the generator is over here and we're inputting 32 volts into this piece of cable, it's going to go 32, 31, 30, 29. So by the time it gets to this mixer on the end of the line, it's only got 29 volts. There are cables that don't lose any power over distances, but those are normally very expensive. As you can see here, there is a lot of different cable. Although tin right now is the cheapest and best solution for us, even though there is the cable loss on there. So yeah, because this tin cable can only handle 4 amps, we are only allowed to put a maximum of 4 steam turbines on this line. We are going to use 2, and that basically means we can only run a few of these machines at once. One, because of the amount of steam we're producing is not exactly great. And two, because of course we're only giving this thing two amps. And the amps very much depends on the recipe you're trying to run. Okay, please no explosions. No, no, our logic is correct. <laughs> yeah, so for example, this recipe here for the tin cable only requires seven EU per tick. So that's basically not even going to use a full amp, which means that we could have technically that assembler way, way on the end there so that it loses all the power through the tin cable and it's still going to run the recipe because it only requires seven. So sometimes you can actually use it to your advantage. Anyways, over here, I think we're just going to have the one turbine since we only have a line of three machines. And again, a lot of this will end up getting changed over time. Hopefully we have enough potent pipe here by now. Oh, we're going to be one short. I don't believe it. So yeah, I hope what I just said there makes sense. There is a few other things to mention about power, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The number one thing that you have to pay attention to is not to overvolt the machines. You can send too many amps to a machine, but just not too many volts. Otherwise... Alright, so we almost have the amount of coke oven bricks that we need for the quest. It's certainly going to end up more than we have on the sign right here, but I wanted to make sure we actually get that quest, and having too many is not necessarily a bad thing, it's super super cheap now. And I thought in the meantime, we should look at a way of fixing our smelting situation. So, for that, I think we can use a hefty amount of steel here. I think we're down to our last, like, 43? That's not good. I think it's 8 of these boiler tanks we need. And we are going to invest in the steam oven. Quest? Yes, Quest. Smell all the things. Oh my goodness, this machine room is so loud. Anyways, yeah, somewhat unsurprisingly, these things also run on steam. 
and will process any furnace recipe, I think with the exception of turning logs into charcoal. And it's also 2x2, two two, which makes it a bit awkward to place. I think we're going to place it above our steam grinders though. Yeah, something like this can probably work, but I, I think I still do want to move these things. I'm, I'm still not sure about the layout of this whole thing. But yeah, we have a multi-block. We should just be able to connect the steam and fix the shutters on the pipes. It should have filled the internal buffer, perfect. And now we should be able to toss some of this crushed ore in. Oh, that's not bad. Does it do more than one? That's the question. I've never actually used this thing before. It does, it does all nine at a time. Okay, that's amazing. That is awesome. And uh, maybe we should take up some inputs and outputs. If I remember correctly, some of these chests are actually empty. We might just borrow these. Yeah, I'm gonna take these gold chests. Also, is it a blood moon? I. Yes, it's a blood moon. Oh nice, if we didn't have a good enough excuse to move these things before, it turns out it's on a chunk boundary, which is a big big no-no. In fact, is it on two? Not quite, but let me address this first of all. This is going to be exhilarating, look how slow it is to break these things. Not the controllers, but look at all the bricks. This is GT New Horizons. <laughs> All right, it took me some time, but I think this is the layout we're gonna go for here. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I think it might have been episode two. We do want to make sure that we obey the chunk boundaries because of the Greg Tech multi-blocks. All right, and we just have to give these things steam again. I can hear so many zombies outside. And it's been a few days since the Blood Moon as well. Like this place is so unsafe, it's unbelievable. Okay, we have steam again, right? Yes. We got the input chests here and the output chests are just gonna go below again. Actually, where was the old output chest? Is it this one? Yeah, we have to get a dolly for that. This thing. It came in pretty useful when reshuffling a lot of the chests upstairs. And we're also going to need some hoppers. I think we have some in the assembly machine. Perfect. That is going to go right here. Yeah, and the steam oven is positioned a little bit awkwardly because it's two by two. But eventually we can have another one to balance it out. On this, we also have input and output chests. But yeah, apart from the fact that there's dirt in the ceilings and the walls and everything like that, it needs cleaned up quite a bit. I would say this is much better. And we actually have room to go this way also. However, perhaps more importantly, we've also achieved our first goal today. And we got a bit more than two coke ovens. In fact, we also have enough coke oven bricks for a few more here, if we wanted to add them. So the thing that I'm debating right now is, should we have a tank for creosote oil? It definitely makes sense, right? And it, all it costs is really some iron. In terms of its uses, we used to use it as furnace fuel, which we actually don't need anymore because of the steam oven. We can instead repurpose it for things like lubricant. We could burn it for energy for EU, or we could just void it. I'm not a big fan of voiding things in general, but it's always an option. Hey, he shouldn't be out there. There is also the other issue of keeping it full of logs. I mean, it is quite easy just to fill up probably like a whole drawer like this. Look at this. However, I think at least for right now, we're just going to do it manually. We still don't have the cheapest method of creating a lot of the resources we need, which is actually our next steps here. Yeah, look at this, more spruce than we can even carry. And some of it got missed as I can't leave that up there. So I did fill up all the coke ovens with spruce wood, and we can actually now take off the first sign here. We have mission number one accomplished. More than two coke ovens. Next up is the blast furnaces. And yeah, I still think it is a good idea for us to pick up some primitive blast furnaces because of the power issue I mentioned earlier with the electric version. And besides, that's really the reason we invested in these coke ovens. So moving on to the blast furnaces, there are three main materials we need for these. Checking our current supplies, we have zero. I'm looking for the calcite and the gypsum. I'm sure we had some. Did I leave it over here some? Is this it? Aha, it's right here. Okay, we have 24 gypsum and 31 calcite. These are the two biggest things. Everything else is just sand, stone, brick and clay. I do remember in the Steam Age, we do have two quests for gypsum and calcite, which have quest rewards. The first one, we're going to pick 16 gypsum, and the second one, we'll pick the 16 calcite, and two loot bags. I have no idea what we just got there. And also the convenient thing about one of our investments earlier in the episode is that we can actually use this to help us with the blast furnace. The mixer here has to be filled with water, which we actually have automatically. You may have noticed during the time lapse, I actually added a bronze pipe over here, which just takes some of the water from the water tanks. I actually added in two more water tanks just to be safe. Since not only do we have the new mixer down there, I also added a new high pressure solar boiler. So the water goes on this bronze pipe and feeds into the mixer. Circuit number four, clay dust, stone dust, quartz sand and calcite. All right, wrong circuit here. It's circuit number two, not circuit number four. And this is gonna give us wet concrete and two buckets at a time. It's actually a very good deal. 
wet concrete we can use in the fire bricks. And again, we don't have to use the bucket of wet concrete like we did before. So now all we need to gather is some more gypsum and some fire bricks, which is just bricks and clay dust, which can also be done in the mixer. I think we should have a spare tank. Yeah, the ultra low voltage version. This can hold 32 buckets and we can put it on the output of this mixer here. Since we want to keep it in fluid form, at least for this, the blast furnaces, automatic output to the right. And now it's time for our favorite activity, mining. We have to head to the mineral sands vein, which is a couple hundred blocks here to the south. I'm not really sure currently how many blast furnaces we're aiming for, but I know regardless, we need more material than we have. Yeah, here is the ore vein right here. Aha, let me do the name of this game here and do some mining and crafting. Uh oh, that is a big cave. Well, hopefully we survive this expedition. <laughs> let me get some gypsum here. I think we might just have enough here. The very last bucket of concrete. Yeah, I believe it's 40 that we need and we have 41. So I guess there's one extra in case we decide to build one more. Oh, there's an extra one in here as well. So that liquid concrete we used, we can actually also fluid solidify. We don't have a fluid solidifier yet, but solidified concrete is what I actually want to swap out the terracotta and the base with as a floor material. So I think I will actually have to go out for some more calcite soon, but not just yet. We have uh, some objectives to take care of today. One of which is to wait on these blast furnaces finishing the last recipe. And we should be able to actually wall shear these things backwards. What do I mean by that? Uh, <laughs> like, we should be able to put two more on the back of this. But because there's coke ovens in the way, we're going to actually flip it around. We need to wait on the last one here though. How is our water tanks doing in fact? I haven't checked this since I added some more. I suspect they will be okay. Yeah, they're all full. Yeah, yeah, we're fine for water supply. This thing still isn't finished a recipe. This is so slow. It's already been like three minutes. More than three minutes, in fact. Actually, you know what? Speaking of things that take time, several episodes back, I mentioned we need something called mica. One of the most rare overworld resources in terms of an ore vein. And we're going to need it right now for the electric blast furnace. Well, as you can tell by the day counter, this was somewhere around the middle of last episode. I went hunting for basalt since we need it for our base. And we had some incredible luck and ran into some mica. Look at this, all the way on the right hand side here on the eastern side of the map. It just happened to be that one little spot I was at that we found Micah. <laughs> so we do actually have some more mining to do before we can get this blast furnace, but one thing at a time, let's get the primitive ones first. I keep calling them primitive, they're actually bricked blast furnaces. Okay, either I've built this wrong or we have some extra and the quest... Oh, you know, that actually probably accounts for the four that you have to craft the, the controllers with. So having eight spare does actually make sense here. So we want controllers on each side. And now we have pretty much doubled our ability to make steel here. Awesome. I think we will need some more iron to keep this full. And the creosote oil is just about to become an issue here, actually. There's, that's going to fill up pretty soon. I know that we do have lots and lots of iron here, though. Most of it is unsmelted right now. Look at all this. All this mineral sand, that's all iron. And brown limonite and pyrite ore, all of this is iron. Yeah, I've done a lot of mining in this world. All right, so before we go off to craft this electric blast furnace, there are several more efficient upgrades I'd like to make to the base. As you can probably assume, we do need some circuits for the blast furnace itself. I believe it's three. And yeah, there's some things we can do which should improve our efficiency rate on resources to circuit count. The first of which is to build a basic fluid extractor, if we can. We're just missing a piston. This is where we immediately start to use our steel again. All right, there you go, one piston and one fluid extractor. Molten redstone? Yes, molten redstone. Oh yeah, these new machines are such a worthwhile investment. Especially these grinders here. Yeah, we do have this extra steam turbine, so we're just going to add another setup like what we have. And distribute the power using the tin cable again. The super fast steam oven is going to smell as some potent. Alright, so we should have another little module built here. We can add in our turbine. And I forgot the wire cutters to connect this together. So one of the major components in the circuit is the vacuum tubes. 
And now that we have our assembler, we can actually make it with either molten red alloy or molten redstone alloy, which is not the same thing. Redstone alloy, I believe, is the lossless cable for LV. Yeah, 72 litres of molten redstone, plus some steel rods, plus some very loud machines, plus some copper wire, which I have been batch crafting here. Oh yeah, and the sneaky glass tube right there in the recipe should give us a vacuum tube. The glass tube actually can also be done in the fluid solidifier, which kind of goes hand in hand with the extractor here. Let's see if we can also pick up one of those. We can get four more vacuum tubes the inefficient way. Yeah, I mean, we already have the bolts crafted here. Can we craft any more circuits? I think we can if we make some more circuit boards. Yeah, two more electronic circuits. Oh no, we're missing two pumps. Tin rotors, I'm sure I batch crafted those. I'm, we must have went through them all. And during the time I was crafting the blast furnace, actually, I invested in these large steel fluid cells. These things can hold eight buckets each and it should make uh, transferring all these fluids much easier by hand, since obviously there's... Not really an easy way for us to automate this right now. And what was this, circuit five? Yeah, this should be our vacuum tubes, perfect. Okay, after quite a bit of crafting here, I think we should, excuse me, shift click. <laughs> that happens way too often here. There we go, the LV machine hull. We should be able to get our fluid solidifier. And the quest. So now I believe with the exception of the circuit assembly machine, which we are not gonna get today, that requires MV circuits. There is actually an argument to be made that we should have went for this first before the blast furnace. And you know, that argument is probably correct, in fact. <laughs> it probably is the better strategy, but we're going for the blast furnace. We've set our sights on this target right now, and we're going to get it. I've also went through the recipes and counted the fact that we need also an alloy smeller and a foreman press. That's at least another four circuits, plus three for the blast furnace, and of course, all the mining to do. So I'll see you guys in about 12 hours time. Maybe more. <laughs> Who knows? So in the everlasting quest to chase resources, one of the other things we need is Nickel. Nickel will spawn alongside Garnerite and Cobaltite in the Twilight Forest. We did manage to get some dust, presumably from small ores, and we used that inside the ore finder one to go hunt the Twilight Forest. After running around, we did eventually find our Nickel ore vein, and well, it was time to dig another hole. Once the Nickel was dug out, I put that straight through our steam grinders and headed out immediately to find Mica. In the mountains to the east, I dug down to the bottom of the world, and it was time to dig another hole. Well, many holes have been dug out in this world, and we actually still have one more to go before we can get this EBF. I just returned from the mica vein, we got just over three stacks of mica ore, which is also going to go through the steam grinders. And I also have some bad news. Well, kind of. It's bad news for me anyway. <laughs> uh, we need a couple more machines for this EBF. We'll get onto that though, um, yeah, some circuits I didn't account for at first. It looks like the crushed nickel is also finished. Can we smelt this directly or can we... Ah, we can smelt it into nuggets. You know what, I think we'll just forge hammer it. I've also processed some of our asbestos ore, we do need that for the mica insulator sheets. Where is it? Is it here? Aha, it's here, okay. At the moment, we don't really have a simple way to wash things, we should really invest in the ULV washer. Right now, we're just going to use the cauldron for all this. Convert the impure into regular asbestos. Very dangerous material, but we do need it today. We can handle anything, right? Okay, wow, that was fast. Mica is already finished here. And by the way, if you're confused about all of this ore stuff, the fact that we have crushed, impure, regular piles, small piles, tiny piles, I'm going to go over that all in a later episode. What we're going to do right now, though, is make sure that we put the mica ore through the centrifuge. Instead of putting it through the cauldron, we can have an 11.11% chance to get double the dust. And since mica is so rare, we do want to make sure we get the most out of this. And we should also empty this chest, this is very full. I've been processing a whole bunch of garbage here. Yeah, let's make use of our steam oven here. We are just going to wash the nickel. And there's basically two things we need to do with nickel. Mix with copper and mix with iron. So we'll, we'll say maybe like three stacks mixed with copper and... Or three and a half mixed with iron, three and a half mixed with copper. Oh my goodness, these steam grinders. I can't sing their praise enough, look at this. It's so good. Yeah, so the copper and the iron dust with circuit 1 should give us Invar. 
All right, so if we check the quest for the EBF, the heatproof machine casings is primarily made out of this Invar material. In various forms, we can just put it through the bending machine and then through the assembly machine for the box. The electric blast furnace itself is another casing plus iron furnaces, circuits, and tin cable. Easy, right? Input and output buses, maintenance, muffler, and energy hatch we're going to come back to. Cooper nickel coil blocks. The Cooper nickel is why we mix the copper with the nickel on circuit 3. It's a different circuit number, so I'll have to switch that over in a second. However, also as part of the coils, we need something called mica insulator foil and molten tin, but we should be able to manage molten tin. So the insulator foil, we need the bending machine, which we have. We need the alloy smelter, which we now have. I just crafted this thing. We need the forming press, which we also have right here. This is what the asbestos is for. And then the mica pulp, we have to mix sticky resin with mica. Oh, actually, we can use raw rubber dust. Our, our mixer is going to be tied up for quite a while here. You know, perhaps the most concerning thing about this is we need at least 56 steel for the inputs. Wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Look at all this. Okay, I, I definitely didn't mean to make that many coke ovens. <laughs> I was just loading up this alloy smelter. I just kept it full of clay and sand. Anyways, yeah, we need a lot of steel. And fortunately, we did upgrade our blast furnaces. I just don't know if it's going to be enough for today. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Did he do any damage? I don't think so. No, I think we're good. I think we're fine. Okay, you know what? We actually have about 30 pieces of steel in each. We should actually be okay. Huge win for infrastructure upgrades. That's amazing. All right, so we are still waiting on the mixer and some other processes. However, I believe we can get the controller block for the blast furnace. Not quite the quest. Wait a second. It is the quest. We need the rest of the multi-block here. And for that, we can take some of our glue, which I've set aside in the tank. Hopefully we have enough glue for this, actually. Which goes inside the assembly machine with an LV machine hull. And we also need a chest. I believe it's circuit one. You know, I'm kind of surprised at myself for remembering all of this. It's been, it's been a while. Circuit 1 should give us the input bus, circuit 2 should give us the output bus. Right? Yes, there's the input bus. And 24 seconds later, the output bus. We also need our maintenance hatch, basically one of every tool. I also used the wrong crowbar there. I used the Realcraft one instead of the Gregtech one. We are also going to need something called a muffler hatch. And the muffler hatch is supposed to control pollution levels, but we have it turned off in the configs. It's still required to form the multi-block though, even if that is the case. So there you go, one muffler hatch, LV. We need an input hatch, which is different from an input bus. Input hatch is for fluids. We need one of these tanks out here. It is a similar recipe though, with a refined glue and an LV machine hull. Circuit one. And it also appears that some cooper nickel has finished smelting here. This all has to be turned into wire through the wire mill somewhere. I moved a lot of these machines. I don't know where anything is anymore. Here we are. And yes, the input hatch, perfect. So I think that just leaves us with the energy hatch and the coils. And the energy hatch, yeah, ah, uh, yes. The, <laughs> the energy hatch. We need something called lubricant, which I brought up earlier, in fact. And for that, we need a distillery. Another machine, yes, I know. Can we make a distillery by any chance? You know what? I think we actually might be able to if we get one piece of glass. I can't believe we're only short one piece of glass. Yeah, and one more pump. And our next LV machine, the basic distillery. No quest for this one, huh? And these tanks right here are not portable. You have to be careful with this. You must use a dolly if you want to pick them up. I, uh, I avoided a few fluids doing that earlier on. But with the distillery, I think it's only circuit 1. We should be able to create some lubricant here. Nope, it's circuit 24. 8 litres at a time, and I think we need two full buckets, which is going to be a while. So the very last thing we need is going to be here in the nether. Oh, what did he just drop there? A wrath shard. Yeah, the very last material we need is some nether quartz for the mica insulator sheets. It's been a little while later, I think the, the lubricant is finished. It's just this that we're waiting on, basically. And there is nether quartz down there. I wonder if we should find another one, because remember, the pigmen do aggro if you mine the ores next to them. That looks like a, a really bad time down there. Aha, I think we're on to a winner here. We got ourselves a quartzite vein. And I think actually what we want here is the Certus Quartz, not necessarily the Quartzite. Yeah, Quartzite does give us two and Certus and Nether Quartz gives us four. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. It's time to dig another hole. 
Okay, we grabbed a few stacks, now we just have to figure out how we get back. There is an extensive tunnel network now in the nether. i done a lot of digging to get where we had to be. It's somewhere up here. Would be quite nice to have slash home, but that kind of ruins the fun in this game. It should be here, right? Yes. Awesome, we are back home. Let's get all of this Ceres processed. We should also have our four cells of lubricant. And I did craft the coils for this, which means we should be able to get our two energy hatches. Wait a second, I didn't craft enough coils here. Fine steel wire and magnetic iron rods. Oh, look at all of this mica-based pulp here. This is all going to go through the forming press. Some of it already has with the asbestos. Yeah, there's the second energy hatch. And now all we need is the 16 coil blocks, which we actually should be able to start crafting here. So I melted down some tin. It's going to be 2x cooper nickel wire, circuit number 3, and our mica, which should be in the bending machine. Mica insulator foil. And we're off. We are crafting here. Oh my goodness, awesome. We need 16 coils at least. And you know, we may actually be able to get more than 16. We are going to need them in the future, so we might as well. We may or may not have run out of steam right now. Uh, it's not actually the first time it's happened this episode, but we're going to completely ignore it. Things are going fine and dandy here. There's completely... Uh, everything has has enough power to keep running here. We are absolutely fine. <laughs> Fortunately, single blocks do not void the recipe if there's not enough power. It's a different story for the multi-blocks, but yeah, we're going to have to take care of some power issues next episode, at least. Yeah, these four solar boilers are not cutting it anymore. However, check this out, this should be the 16th Cooper Nickel Coil. And that also completes our electric blast furnace. Mission accomplished. Oh man, that feels good. And it's going to be the first of a few blast furnaces, many blast furnaces. And there she is, the electric blast furnace. Now, of course, this thing is completely useless right now because we have no power for it. But we will take care of all of that and more next episode. This is going to be the end of this one. Very, very long one for me this time. Big thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this. I told you this was where the real grind begins. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons.